Tamsulosin is one of the medication that is used in the management of prostate enlargement. It can be given in a condition called benign prostatic hyperplasia which is associated with prostate enlargement. BPH mainly involves few symptoms like urinary urgency and increased urinary frequency. But at the same time, people may have weak stream of urine because of blocking of urethral pathway. This makes the people to pee more number of times, particularly during the night. However, due to weak stream of urine, they cannot empty the bladder completely. That further increases the frequency of urination. This condition may be developed in the people with age above 50 years and it produces difficulty urination as well as lifestyle complications. Tamsulosin can be used in this condition and it improves the symptoms of BPH. With use of Tamsulosin, people may have increased urinary flow so they can empty the bladder completely. This reduces the frequency of urination. Even the urinary urgency can also be reduced. However, what is the effect of Tamsulosin on the prostate size? How it is affecting the prostate enlargement and how long this medication should be taken in people with prostate enlargement? All such things we will discuss in this video. First of all, let us see what is Tamsulosin. Tamsulosin is a selective alpha-1A blocker. Alpha-1 adrenergic receptors are one type of receptors that are activated by sympathetic system. They are mainly responsible for contraction of the particular muscle where they are located. Particularly, alpha-1 receptors are located on the blood vessels, so they are responsible for constriction of the blood vessels. Therefore, on activation of alpha-1 receptors, they increase the vasoconstriction leading to increase in the blood pressure. That's why alpha-1 blockers like prazosin, doxazosin and terazosin can be used as antihypertensives. They can inhibit the vasoconstriction mediated by alpha-1 adrenergic receptors, thereby they produce vasodilation. This improves the blood flow as well as it reduces the blood pressure. Few of the alpha-1 blockers can also produce relaxation of the bladder, so they can also improve the symptoms of BPH. However, these alpha-1 blockers are not specific to the bladder. They can produce the relaxation of both vascular smooth muscle as well as the bladder. Therefore, when they are indicated for BPH, they can produce few side effects that are related to vascular smooth muscle. In contrast to alpha-1 blockers, Tamsulosin is somewhat more selective. It blocks a specific alpha-1 type receptors that are located on the bladder as well as urethral pathway. These are the alpha-1A receptors which are located on the bladder neck, prostate and urethra. Therefore, Tamsulosin can block these alpha-1A receptors leading to relaxation of the prostate, bladder neck and urethra that improves the urinary flow as well as reduce the symptoms like urinary urgency and urinary frequency. Therefore, incomplete emptying of bladder can be minimized by use of tamsulosin. However, it is not affecting the size of the prostate gland. Prostate enlargement involves action of few hormones and it mainly involves cell proliferation. One of the important hormone is the testosterone. This testosterone can act on the prostate but it has less affinity compared with uh, its active metabolite. Testosterone is going to be converted into its active metabolite dihydrotestosterone by action of one of the enzyme 5 alpha reductase. Now, DHT is having the more affinity towards the prostate gland. Therefore, it plays key role in increasing the size of prostate compared with testosterone. Therefore, in people with increased 5 alpha reductase activity, more DHT is going to be produced that results in the increased prostate growth. Generally, with increase in the age, the prostate size can also be increased with more action of DHT on the prostate. Normally, in the men with ages above 50 years, the testosterone levels may be reduced. However, DHT levels are not parallelly reduced. This increases the ratio of DHT to testosterone in the body. So, more number of DHT with low levels of testosterone may have an increased effect on prostate enlargement. As the DHT levels increases, it can more act on the prostate to produce cell proliferation and tissue differentiation. It also prevents a programmed cell death called apoptosis. 
normally this apoptosis controls the proliferation of the cells and whenever the cell growth is uncontrolled apoptotic pathways may be stimulated that produces again control on the cell proliferation however higher levels of dht can reduce this apoptosis thereby prostate cells can grow at a higher rate leading to prostate enlargement so here alpha 1a adrenergic receptors are not playing any key role in influencing the prostate enlargement therefore tamsulosin cannot reduce the prostate size as it is not having any action on 5 alpha reductase enzyme it is not reducing the levels of dht as well as it is not affecting the apoptosis of prostate cells therefore tamsulosin can only improve the symptoms of bph by relaxing the bladder neck prostate and urethra it improves the urinary flow and reduces the urinary frequency it is not having any effect on the prostate size that's why tamsulosin should be taken as long as symptoms of bph are troublesome using of tamsulosin can improve the lifestyle by improving the urinary flow but in people with uh, excessive prostate enlargement tamsulosin is ineffective in reducing the prostate size that's why tamsulosin can be given to the people with mild to moderate prostate enlargement where it relieves the symptoms in people with significant prostate enlargement 5 alpha reductase inhibitors can be used medications like finasteride and dutasteride are particularly used to inhibit 5 alpha reductase enzyme thereby they can inhibit the levels of dht this produces the shrinkage of prostate and improves the symptoms of bph but at the same time 5 alpha reductase inhibitors alone cannot improve the symptoms of bph as they are not producing the relaxation of bladder neck urethra and prostate that's why in people with troublesome symptoms with significant prostate enlargement alpha 1a blockers like tamsulosin can be combined with 5 alpha reductase inhibitors like finasteride or dutasteride this combination can produce both improvement in the symptoms as well as it can reduce the prostate size however using the 5 alpha reductase inhibitors may be associated with few of the troublesome side effects because they are affecting the hormones they may have few of the significant effects like chest pain irregular heartbeats weight gain and angioedema and even 5 alpha reductase inhibitors alone are ineffective so they should be combined with uh, tamsulosin few of the risk factors can also result in the prostate enlargement particularly elevated levels of estrogens like estradiol can also contribute to proliferation of stromal cells that results in again prostate enlargement chronic inflammation can also affect the prostate leading to its proliferation excessive secretion of growth factors can also promote enlargement of the prostate gland people with obesity and diabetes may also have increased risk for developing prostate enlargement sedentary lifestyle can result in the poor circulation and increase the risk of inflammation that again produces loss of apoptosis and increase cell proliferation leading to development of bph taking high fat diet or diet with low fiber content can also increase the systemic inflammation and may increase the estrogen levels this may indirectly increase proliferation of the prostate cells all these factors can produce prostate enlargement however tamsulosin is not affecting these risk factors it only improves the symptoms of bph by producing relaxation of the bladder neck and urethra therefore tamsulosin should be used to improve the symptoms of bph and it may be used as long as it is needed to improve the symptoms of bph in people with significant prostate enlargement use of tamsulosin alone is ineffective so that's all about effect of tamsulosin on prostate size I hope this video is useful to you. If you really like this video, please subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends, post your comments in the comment box. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.